Okay, Arvin, we are back for another video. Today, we're talking about product tier, tier sizes and how FBA fees are calculated. So can you just give us uh, kind of an intro to this and break down what the product tier sizes are and really how we think about this? Well, yeah, I mean, this is a very important uh, thing to consider, especially for someone selling via FBA. Because, I mean, though we're focusing more on the FBA fees, but actually with this, uh, you know, with whatever size your or tier size your product is in, this is always the basis of Amazon for calculating everything. Like, for example, the storage. The second sure. one, uh, if let's say for the removal of the inventory, right? Um, there are also other things about, sorry, because I, I know I was looking at it earlier, because also with the multi-channel fulfillment, it's also just related to FBA fee, but this is like whatever size you have, is always the basis of Amazon and how much they will charge you on sure. whatever you are using on the FBA program. And one thing too so, is that yeah. if they, Amazon's not always perfect either. And so sometimes they can miscategorize your products and, and it doesn't yeah. happen the right necessarily right away. Like maybe it's right, it's the correct, uh, you're in the correct tier for the first three months of selling. And then all of a sudden they remeasure one of your products and put it in the next tier category up, which obviously means you're going to start incurring more fees on the fulfillment side and on storage and everything else. So it's definitely something for sellers that they really need to be aware of and monitoring on a at least semi-regular basis. So how is, can you tell me like, how is um, the FBA fee actually calculated? Uh, yeah, the, the FBA fee is calculated based on the tier size. I mean, that's why, you know, we talked about this one because you know, the Amazon have, um, you know, small standard size, they have large standard size, and they even have the uh, oversized product. So, it, you know, they have, um, if you will look, there's actually a table where you can, um, on the Amazon help page, where you can see how much you will be charged if your product weighs this much, or even the dimension of the item, like length, width, and height is actually under this dimension or, or measurement then that's wh what will be the basis of um, the, the calculation of the FBA fee. The, the only so it's based on the that... dimensions and the, the volume it's going to take up essentially in their warehouse. And then yes. plus the shipping it... weight um, as well. Yeah. But actually, if your product is in the uh, oversized category, the base, the calculation will be different because it will be based on the dimensional weight, which is the length times width times height times 139, or rather divide <laughs> by 139 and whatever will be the, uh, the product there is the um, dimension or, or the, um, the measurement of your item. But Amazon will compare it if let's say the actual weight is actually much heavier than the, 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 dimension, the dimensional weight and Amazon will charge the FBA fee, whichever is higher. So yeah. um, that's one thing the, uh, to, to consider. And on the there. flip side too, is I know Amazon does have this small and light program, which they do periodically change how you get oh, in that. They are actually getting rid of that. Okay, but now that there you, you go, there's that, the update then. <laughs> But yeah, there. Because uh, I was looking at it the other day, and I know that Amazon was actually going like looking at uh, introducing this one other one, which is SIPP. Uh, I forgot what is uh, the exact term, but it's actually going to be Amazon. You, you know, Amazon FBA when they're fulfilling your inventory, they will no longer put it into another packaging or another box. Instead, whatever packaging that you have right now when you send it to FBA then that's how um, they will send it to your customer and then Amazon will give you a certain amount of discount and it's also VC uh, you can also see that in the Amazon table that uh, okay if I say for example my product maybe I bought an iPhone but usually Amazon will put it in a box right but right now they will just send it to you with the iPhone packaging the only concern of course is privacy of the product or also for um Aside from privacy, is making sure that the product will actually arrive and still in good condition. You know, privacy sure. meaning, let's say, maybe the customer buys something that they don't, she don't want to, uh, to be known to her neighbor, but or maybe it's actually a surprise. But then it arrived in already whatever packaging it is. So, but yeah, but yeah, yeah there will be like a certain discount. But also, Amazon has an eligibility for that one because not every product may uh, may be qualified on that SIPP.
because yeah. they will measure the hardness of the the box or the packaging. Now, I know we have another video on this, but it's probably worth calling out just here in this video as well. What do you do if you notice that Amazon is putting you in a higher category, a higher tier or a, a higher fee structure category? Like, let's say you're well, not an oversized that's... product and now you're seeing in Seller Central and your manager inventory page that it is being classified as oversized. Yeah, so that's the time for you to actually ask Amazon for a QB scan. So if, let's say, suddenly your FBA fee, that's why it's actually really important to monitor this uh, this piece because you will because if you're not doing anything or you, you, you don't have any integration or seller, seller central account that will notify you that your FBA fee increased from this to this much, then you won't notice it. And then actually Amazon is only giving you three months to file a claim and if not, then all the other order IDs that is over three months will no longer be eligible for, for a reimbursement. And then, yeah, if you yeah. suddenly notice that Amazon actually increased your FBA fee, then you can ask for a QB scan, meaning that you will ask someone from the Amazon warehouse to actually go to the warehouse, take a picture of the product and confirm the dimension of the item. Usually they will just say that, okay, this is the actual measurement of the, the product right now, but they are not really measuring it. QB scan, by the way, is remeasuring. And then if you really believe that it is really wrong and then Amazon will just constantly give you that eh, what we have in the way is actually correct, then it's time for you actually to take a picture of the product, measure it, and show it to Amazon that, hey, yeah, you got it wrong. This is the um, correct dimension of my product. And then please correct it. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. how to do it by a QB scan. And you can only ask a few uh, QB scan or a measurement in a, in a in a quarter i think 20 in a quarter but i'm not Got sure it. if that's actually correct still yeah so that's important to know about um so one thing i just wanted to call out as well is if anyone does have quick questions about this one you can leave it in the comments under this video we also have on um, our website a chatbot for amazon sellers so you can ask these types of questions and get answers on the spot producthouse.com h-a-u-s so for example, you can ask it things like understanding product tier sizing and how FBA fees are calculated. It's going to spit out a high level response for you that kind of breaks this down a little bit more. And you can go and uh, head and ask it all kinds of other questions. So that's just one thing I wanted to share as a free resource. And we'll put the link in uh, the comments under this video. Arvin, is there anything else that you want to call out on this topic or that you know people who are selling, getting started or thinking about selling should know about this? Well, I guess to me, it's just really giving importance on this uh, information or this data because, I mean, this may actually like a small thing to some uh, because, yeah, there's a lot of things to focus on when it comes to the business or growing the business. But if you're not really looking after this, uh, probably you know that every product that you are selling, you're making a dollar profit, for example. But then Amazon suddenly increased your FBA fee to $2 then you're actually losing a dollar. I mean, that's yeah. because you are not tracking it or you're not doing anything about it. So if you cannot handle it, then look for someone who will do it for you. I mean, probably your bookkeeper will not know, especially, right? And I know that, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that, I'm not generalizing, but mostly uh, for those who is doing bookkeeping for Amazon account, they are doing it in bulk. So if they're, if they're not doing the recording of sales, on an SKU level, then they will probably not know right away that one SKU is losing a lot of money. But if they're doing it on an SKU level, then yeah, then maybe your accountant can tell and say that, hey, suddenly the, the FBA fee of this product is actually, uh, like has increased a lot. To me, I'm an accountant by profession, so I'm speaking in that, but that's the reason why I really want to record the sales on an SKU level is so that I can for, uh, perform an analysis that I don't have to wait for someone to actually see that there's something wrong. I want to see it when I look at the books. Oh, actually, what happened here? Why is my FBAV gone up for this month? So, yeah. yeah. And then Speed it's a is key, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. but that's the importance of staying on top of things. And, you know, I've, uh, I'm reading a book about Amazon right now and just how they built in all, so many of these automated systems. And that's kind of what you need to have in your business is a way to quickly, like the same day, that you get moved into a higher fee structure, you get an email alert or something like that, or have someone on your team who's calling that out so you can get it corrected immediately. These are the kind of issues you don't want to drag on, otherwise it's really gonna impact your bottom line. So um, thanks for sharing all that stuff. If anyone watching does have more questions, just let us know in the comments under this video, get in touch with us and we'll do our best to help you out or point you in the right direction. Uh, so I think that's it for this one. 
Awesome. Awesome. Thanks.